What's up guys? Welcome back to Kingpin Garage. This is our 1988 FXR. Now, we had previously done a video on how Johnny and I picked this thing up. It was the bargain of the century because it didn't run. So we drove all the way up to, where was it we drove to? Marin County? Marin County. Marin County. Drove about an hour away, 1988 FXR uh, low rider. That's what the FXR SL or whatever, FXR L. Doesn't matter. Point is, it didn't look nothing like this. And if you look at the video before this, John, I'll put a link to the video in this one. It was what we called plain Jane. It was unmolested. It was kind of an ugly color blue. It looked like it was done maybe like early 90s, had that early 90s feel to it, if you know what I mean. Had the chrome T-bars on it, a lot of chrome pieces, more stocker than anything. But the problem is when we got there, the thing just did not run. So we thought, oh, great. Chief FXR, this is gonna be the greatest thing ever. We got it home, we got it running. The problem was it smoked like crazy and didn't run right. So we started the whole thing. We're like, well, if we can't get this thing to run right, why don't we tear the motor down? So we tore the motor completely down. We rebuilt the motor. We got new pistons, new rings, new valve seals. That's what it was. The valve seals were leaking down. The thing was smoking like crazy. Rebuilt the carb, um, new cam in it. And uh, there's a whole story behind that about the cam, which we'll go into in another video. Um, and so let's see, what else we do? Oh, Thunder Header. Um, so Thunder Header, s, s Carb, rebuilt the engine, new pistons, new rings, new valve seals, uh, new cam. The transmission, for all you FXR guys out there, is not a spline shaft, I wish it was. It's an 88, so it is one of the, with the, probably the last year, the last year of the tapered shaft. I wish it was a spline shaft, but it's not, it's a taper shaft. I'm gonna live with it because it only has 25,000 miles on it. So eventually when we change it out, we're gonna change it out to the taper shaft. We put the stepped up seat on it, which we love. Uh, let's see, we powder coated a bunch of parts here. We had Mo over at Auto Europa who does the best paint in the Bay Area do the paint. We went with the black, obviously. He eliminated this, you know, the FXR tank always has the seam down the middle right here. That's why everyone has the dash right here. If you look, everyone runs that dash. Always has the big seam down the middle. He eliminated the seam, smoothed it all out so the way the tank looks like one piece. Powder coated a bunch of parts, painted a bunch of parts. We ran the 1970s kind of style AMF decals on here. T-bars, powder coated the rims, and made it look nice. But, but, and the big but is, there's a few things that really bother me about this bike. Now this is a bike I'm gonna keep forever. It's a bike I wanna ride all the time. There's a couple things that bother me. First of all, we wanted longer shocks. So we went with these, I'll just say cheap, Johnny hates these rip-off shocks, piggybacks. They're not the originals. They're not this style, which I'm gonna show you that we picked up. So we did not have these shocks when we first got the bike. These are the ones we wanted, okay? We did not have these. We eventually scored a set. The other thing that bothered me about this bike was a single disc front end because who the hell wants an FXR with a single disc front end? I don't, you don't, no one does. So we just ran it until we could find this. And if you look right there, that is the score of the Sentry. This is the Harley fully adjustable front end, okay? Dual disc, and this one in particular is gonna be found on the 1200S or the FXDX. That's what it's gonna be, the Dyna. This one is actually off an FXDX. It's off the Dyna, and actually it's off of a newer version because the calipers, you can see the brake calipers are gonna be the 2000 up version. And why don't we just up the ante a little bit. So we searched high and low and we scored Brembos, but not just regular Brembos. These are the CBO Brembos. So now I know it's crazy. Oh, Brembos are Brembos, yeah, I know that. But the point is, why not, if you're gonna do it, you're gonna go all the way, why not get the CBO ones that were on the CBO? So we're gonna run these brakes on that front end. So it's gonna have a killer front end, fully adjustable, and it's gonna have killer brakes. But let me talk about that front end now, what we did. Normally the front end, as you can see right there, we got the gold tubes. It did not have the gold tubes. It did not have the black legs. It did not have the black powder for the triple tree, which we all did. We fully rebuilt the front end. When we found it, it looked like it sat, I wanna say mm, under a lake for about six months. We got it at a swap meet, it was a score, and no one wanted it because it was so rusty and crusty. But all we really wanted were these lower legs. We stripped them down, had them powder coated black, rebuilt the internals, and then we put the gold fork tubes on them. Now, 
Normally they're gonna be silver, we put the gold ones on, and if you know anything about these fork tubes, they're actually a little different on the adjustable ones. That's a whole nother video. I don't need to get into it, but we had to modify these fork tubes to get them to work, but we got them to work and they work great. Heavy duty fork oil in there, fully rebuilt on the inside. Plus, not only are they dual disc, fully adjustable, we're gonna run the Brembos, they're actually longer than this. So this is a shorter front end because it's the low rider style. This is the longer front end because it's the FXDX or the 1200S style. So finally now, the bike's not gonna be sitting like this, which we don't want. It's gonna be sitting nice and level because we're gonna run the 13 and a halfs in the back. So that's where we're at. Powder coated triple tree, gold fork tubes, black lowers, eliminate all this, dual disc front end. We're gonna swap out that and we are gonna get two, well, score two floating rotors too. Harley floating rotors, we're gonna run those up front. We're gonna leave the T-bars. We're gonna try to change out this eyebrow to the powder coated one. And uh, it's just gonna be so much better. And it's gonna be what it should be. That's what an FXR should be. This is kind of, mm, you know, 90% there in my mind. So now we're gonna push it to 100%. So uh, this next, we're just gonna go through it. And uh, yeah, we'll get to it. Also, what we did was we switched these controls over to the new style controls from the old style controls and because we knew we were going to do the dual disc front end we put in an 11 16th master cylinder but what we think we did is this thing has a lot of pressure when you squeeze it so we think we blew out the seals in the old style single caliper down here and what that basically that means is all of the brake fluid just slowly leaked out over time and then we had no front brakes which we definitely did not want and it really sucked yeah but we did we did ride it a couple times we did ride it a couple times <laughs> with no front brakes the difficult part with this when you're putting newer parts on older bikes or older parts on newer bikes or whatever you're doing this is where you have to have some mechanical ability and creativity so here's where we're running to the problems with the axles that nine spoke mag which i committed to by powder coating instead of switching over to 13s and now i don't know if i regret it or or love it or whatever but the point is that's got the timken bearings in it now the problem is that front end is off of a 2000 up style it's gonna have the sealed bearings in it off the fxdx this is the older style timken bearings and when we end up we end up with we end up that axle isn't going to work this axle isn't going to work. This axle we're going to have to modify. So John's going to have to throw this thing on the lathe and he's going to have to basically mill that all the way down to that spot so we can get that to run in that front end because this end right here, the fat front, that fat part right there goes into that fork leg and this goes into that end of the fork leg. This, what you would think would go in there, right there is too small. So I could either have sleeved it right there which I've done before on bikes, put a sleeve on there to make it go into there, or we just throw this on the lathe and we just knock that down. So that's probably what we're gonna end up doing. We'll have a video of that done. Because if I run the, uh, if I go into my manual, which I do have several manuals, and I pull up the part numbers, and I ordered the axle for that, which I did, this is what I ended up getting, which is the wrong axle. So we're gonna have to make our own. Oh, the other thing too, which is really cool, which we're gonna do, Handlebar bushings, we got these really cool ones. Look at those things. Gold on one side, silver on the other. We're gonna put those in there, even though you, you might catch a glimpse of it here and there. It's just the fact that we'll have a little bit of gold with the black is gonna look really cool. And anything else? That's a lot to tackle on a rainy Saturday, but that's what we're gonna do. That's what we're gonna do. So we're gonna start tearing into this thing in a minute and uh, yeah, we'll see what comes up. 